We want you to know that Career Services is here. We're here to support you. And they're here to help you through this journey. And guess what, you all? Guess what? They support you even when you graduate. Say what? I did. I said it. I said they are here to support you even after you graduate. So yes, when you are seven years out, seven years out, you've graduated from Aurora University and it's been seven years, you can contact Career Services because you're an alum and you can get additional support. So I just want to say that. So welcome. I want to know who's in the room. I want to know who's in the room. This session is launching your career, launching a successful internship or job search. So listen up, you all. So we remember we briefly talked about LinkedIn. We're going to talk about LinkedIn even more in this webinar. You're actually going to build or enhance or update or even start your LinkedIn account. So drop a two in the chat. Who has a LinkedIn profile? Drop a two in the chat. Drop a two. Drop a two. You have a LinkedIn. Ooh. Tori, word on the street is that if you connect with Tori, you drop a little note. Just say, Tori, I was in the session three, launching your career, launching a successful length, um, internship or job search, and I wanted to connect with you. Word on the street is that she'll connect with you. Is that true? Am I lying? I guess I'll think no. No, yes. Yes, <laughs> I will. I will connect with you. So feel free to reach out during the session, after the session. Have your LinkedIn up during the session because we will be working on it and talking through a lot of it. You may have questions based on that, but yes, reach out to me, connect with me on LinkedIn, connect with Sherry. We are always happy to connect with you guys on LinkedIn and help you um, connect you to alumni and other people within our network. And we know some people. Tori really knows some bit. people because she's still in. She, she don't, don't listen to her right now when she said that. Listen to her otherwise, but right now that comment <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Tori has, she literally, a part of her job, right? She wears many hats, but a part of her job is to go out and connect with employers. And so she has this growing network of employers that are looking for amazing students like you all, okay? <clears throat> so please connect. I'm your overall dope hype woman, all the wonderful things. I have a few businesses at the core, at the center of my heart. I'm a licensed clinical professional counselor. I own my own private practice, but just to let you know, in my master's program, I created a, a path, a career path where I was able to do career services and I did it for some time. And then I left career services and started my own private practice. I did some other things as well, but I just want you to know that career is near and dear to my heart. I've never told this story, I don't think to AU students, possibly last summer, but what really um, um, positioned me or rooted me into marrying career and mental health, even though they're already together, was I was interning at Family Counseling Services of Aurora. And <clears throat> one of my intern, one of my roles was to co-facilitate and then eventually facilitate a domestic violence 26 week program. And what I learned from that program was that the individuals, and I was working with men, the men in that group, the reason why they were there, it wasn't, the reason why they were there was because they, uh, you know, police was called, they did something harmful to their partner, to their friend. Um, but the, what led them to that behavior was actually career related. You all, my mind was blown. What do I mean by that? That they were stressed because they, they did have a high school education, but they did not have a college background. And so they were working jobs that they would get fired fast or they worked weren't they were not making enough money to provide for their family they were working maybe they were even doing construction and we know right construction is only vibrant around the summer and spring time and so often a lot of people were without a jobs but that is what actually happened they were so stressed with career jobs employment that when they didn't, when they got overwhelmed, they took it out on their partner in various ways. And it wasn't intentional. It was truly because they were holding on to that stress and they projected it onto someone else. For me, you all, that was a pivotal moment. And what I said to myself was, I'm going to take career and I'm going to work with students like you all. And I'm going to help you all understand how to create your career path. And one of my missions when I was at Dominican University one of my missions was that to help students know that if you prepare yourself, you can prepare yourself so well that you'll never be without a job. 
that you will never be without a job. And so I was able to do both. Now I'm solely focusing on mental health right now, but I'm so grateful to be here with you all to give you more nuggets and motivation. I'm your overall dope hype woman. I want to light fire under you, healthy fire, so that you can feel motivated and inspired to do what you're what you're wanting to do, what you're being called to do, and what you're excited about doing. And then also to give you some tips and tools how to um, practically get there. All right. Okay. So let's let's get into it. Who's in the room? I want you to type your first and last name, hit comma. I want you to put your major, I want you to put your career interests. Now, you might have one, you might have 12. I wanna know it all, okay? And that's gonna be important too for Tori, as you all are meeting with career services, she's gonna remember you all, okay? She's gonna remember that you're interested in a lot of these um, career opportunities. You're gonna add, where did you do your internship, volunteer experience? Um, if you haven't done an internship or volunteer, we want to know that too, and why you're attending this webinar. All right, dual diagnosis counselor. All right, accounting, business administration and finance, trauma counseling. Yes, who is coming in? Cook County Sheriff's Office. I think I saw that. Okay, undecided. You're in a great place. That's all right. You will decide. Hang out with career services, social work, social work, cybersecurity, history. Yes, social justice, human animal. I think it was that human animal uh, major. Yes, studies. I think finance, DCFS, advising counselor. Oof, assisted therapy. How? I think someone asked how to get an internship. I did my internship at the state reps office. Beautiful. Yes, but volunteered at animal shelters and food pantries. Keep them coming. You all, this is important. We, we, we get a chance to save the chat. So as you all are coming into career services office, you want to share with Tori and her team who you are, what you wanna do, and you wanna get in the habit of sharing this information. So listen, if you've hung out with me the last few days, if you've hung out with us the last few days, we have asked you to repeat this information. Yes, it's to, for us to get to know you, but it's also for you to get in the habit of talking about yourself. I really want you all to put down the idea of, I cannot talk about myself. It's not good. I don't want to brag. I don't want to boast. You do. You want to pat yourself on the back, back and you want to toot your own horn, okay, as often as you can. Employers need to know who you are and why you want to go into this field, okay, or whatever field you're interested in, all right? Please make sure you use the chat or the Q&A to ask questions. We want to make sure we answer your questions, but listen up. In that link, so remember there was a link that was dropped in the chat. You're gonna click, you're gonna click on it and it's gonna bring up the worksheet. In that worksheet, there's a, it says, keep organized. Keep organized with an exclamation mark. Drop a one in the chat if you see that, keep organized. You see that on, yes. Yes, you're going to click on that. That's going to be an Excel spreadsheet. If you want to utilize this Excel spreadsheet, it is there for you. It is there. Drop drop in the chat the first tab that you see. Tell me what you see, you all. What's the first tab at the bottom that you see? It is what? What's the, what's the tab? Drop it in the chat. In that Excel spreadsheet, graduate school, yes. How many want to go to graduate school? Drop a two in the chat. How many want to go to graduate school? Yes. So all of my people that are dropping a two in the chat, there are some graduate programs listed on there that you can see. That's for psychology and um, that's for psychology and um, uh, social work folks uh, that are interested in. Graduate school is, um, it's a program that you, I don't know if that question was for me, but um, uh, oh, not sure yet about graduate school. That's okay. But grad for those that might not even know what graduate school is, it is an opportunity for you to advance career, uh, av advance your career, and some are required. So as a licensed clinical professional counselor, I had to go to graduate school um, <clears throat> to get to become a clinician. Um, you cannot become a clinician from undergrad. So for those that are um, looking to 
you know, be doctors, you're going to be going to medical school. So it is um, the next level to your career journey. Okay. For career um, advisors, uh, Tori or Tori's the director of career services. She went for her master's in clinical psychology. Um, and so she has this role, has this position now. Um, so I'm going to answer this question really quickly because I just saw it come in. Um, so what you would become, I think is, is it Antoinette? Um, you would become an LCSW, not an LCPC. So being a counselor in our graduate program, we learn solely about counseling the field, the um, theorists behind counseling, okay? For social work, you're gonna become an LSW after you've worked, okay? After you've worked, you're gonna, the first license in, is an LSW, and then you'll get the second license, which is an LCSW, um, but you're learning more about theorists that, that are within the social work realm, okay? Counseling and social work, we started, in different ways. Social workers started with the, the during the human rights era, right? People having white rights and women's rights. Um, counseling really started in, actually, it, um, actually uh, some of the theorists and some of the stories behind counseling is that it started um, due to the concentration camps. Many people that came out that wanted to help people who have suffered. Um, so, that was, I just went into a whole thing right there. But for those that 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 was helpful for, um, you know, I wanted to be able to share that. But you do, you do, you do become an LSW and an LCSW when you go into the social work route. And at the end of it all, we're doing the same thing. We just learn differently, okay? D differently meaning we learned about different theorists, but we're still providing therapy or counseling. We're still helping folks to live their fullest life. We're still helping them understand whatever is going on in their brain, all of the wonderful things in their body as well. So that Excel spreadsheet, somebody shared graduate schools, okay? What's another tab? You're absolutely welcome. What's another tab in that graduate uh, Excel spreadsheet? Did it say something like mm, empo employment? Oh, I just knocked my glasses off. Did it say employment? Does anybody see that? Does anybody see that? Employment, yes. That is where for those that are going to be graduating and looking for jobs in May, um, classmates, help out our folks. Um, we'll drop the link in the chat one more time and you'll click on the worksheet and then under the, it's towards the end of the page. It's towards the end of the page. I'm the, it's towards the end of the worksheet. Okay, well, you know what? Madeline, we'll get you that worksheet. Um, we'll get you that information. Tori has those documents. And so once you email her, she will get you this information. The employment tab is where you can house all the different jobs that you're looking into. Maybe before you graduate, you want to, well, not even maybe, but before you graduate, you want to be able to apply for several jobs. And you want to stay organized because when they start calling you, you need to know who you're talking with okay you need to be able to remember who who you're talking with so you want to keep yourself organized another tab is network the networking tab is and whose name is in the networking tab there's a there's a network ta networking tab it's a network at the end whose name is on there can anybody drop drop their name in the chat yes <laughs> yes you want to utilize Tori as your network. You want to make sure that you are uh, connecting with her and you want to build your network. So you want that tab to grow, to grow, to grow, to grow. And how do you do that? Well, you're going to start with LinkedIn. Okay. But let me tell you, Tori and I love quotes and we want you to read this quote. You can't build a reputation on what you're going to do. You can't build a reputation on what you're going to do. What stands out? What stands out in that quote? Drop it in the chat. What stands out in that quote? Build, keep going, keep going. Yes, you can't build a reputation on what you're going to do. Reputation, yes. What else? Going, mm, in quotes, going to, yes, 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 yes. Going to do versus have done or will do, yes. We want you to understand 
that career services is here to support you so that you will do what you need to do to build your reputation in your career, in your industry, in your interest. Okay, you all? So how are you going to do this? How are you going to do this? You're going to start with LinkedIn. So everyone, action, not just thinking. Everyone listen up. Have a split screen. Have us on one side and your LinkedIn profile on the other. We are going to update your LinkedIn profile, okay? Guess what? Some of you all already know this. So if you want to drop it in the chat, you can drop it in the chat. It has something to do with the photo. Does anybody remember from our last webinar? What, what there's something amazing that Career Services provides students and alumni for free regarding the photo. Anybody remember from our last call? Regarding LinkedIn, anybody, anybody, anybody? Thank all caps. Yes. Career Services provides you with, through their photographer, come with the raised hands, with the raised hands, headshots. LinkedIn is your professional, it's your professional portfolio. The way you could think of it is, as your professional portfolio. So it is literally your resume online, okay? And so because you can't put your photo on your resume, we have LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the, the number one professional networking website, okay? Uh, profile or portfolio, okay? And so it is an opportunity for you to connect with professionals in the field, Reach out after you've spoken with career services to support you and how to ask for informational interviews. But how amazing is this, is that you can begin searching uh, phlebotomist, uh, surgeon, uh, social worker, um, graphic design artist, how amazing finance manager, an accountant, CPA, and a whole bunch of people will come up on your screen from all around the world. Now, the settings are going to be a bit different because you're going to put in your zip code, but otherwise, you will be able to reach out to those individuals once your LinkedIn profile is ready to go, that you've gotten the green light from Career Services, and you're able to reach out to them to conduct informational interviews where you get to learn about what they're doing and how they're doing it and how they got there and all about the company and what's going on in that field. You also can advertise. Anybody have artwork that they would want to advertise? Anybody have projects that are important to them that have something to do with their career journey? You're able to av advertise that on your LinkedIn profile. But you get to also look for internships on LinkedIn, real internships, internships where you get to even see who the hiring manager is that's advertising this position. And then but again, first, we're going to use LinkedIn for networking. And as you get familiar with it, then you can look for internships, but then you get to look for jobs. Does that sound cool or what? Drop a two in the chat if you're like, that is really cool. I can use it in multiple ways. Absolutely. And guess, guess what? It's free to you. Please do not pay for LinkedIn. Right now in your life, where you are, you don't want to pay, you don't want to pay for it. Tori, please tell us about that amazing resource where they get free professional photos. Yeah. It's so mind-blowing. Take advantage of it, right? So every semester, so we'll do it again, probably in April, March, April timeframe, we'll do professional headshots. However, we've had students who've requested them uh, earlier than that. And if we have uh, availability for photographers have availability, they'll do it then. But they are always free and you can take advantage of it as many times as you want. So if you want to do once a semester, if you want to update it once a year, whatever it is, take as many headshots. They're beautiful, professional headshots, great lighting. Um, you really only have to dress nice from here up. Um, so if you need something, we have the Spartan Attic here where you can grab some clothes. Um, but you can then, yeah, get your picture taken. It's free. And then they'll send you the, like, basically, they usually send two versions. One size is sized specifically for LinkedIn. So... Take advantage of it. Again, if you paid for headshots outside of here, you would be paying thousands of dollars and we are doing it for free for you all the time. So take advantage of that. You don't need to schedule an appointment, but if we do do it, we'll announce the dates and you can just come those days 
Or if, like I said, if you need it sooner, just send me an email um, and we can get it, get you set up sooner if we need to. How many are gonna take advantage of the headshot? Drop a three in the chat. <clears throat> Will they get emails about it, or is there a page they need to follow for you all? It will, yeah, they'll get emails about it. So we send out emails every every Sunday night. So they'll get an email from us about it, or it'll be put and it'll be posted on our Instagram. Um, mm. Yeah, so yeah, you'll hear about it. And again, if you're not sure, if you forgot what the date is, just just email and ask, and we'll and we'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Oh. Someone said I already did last spring. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Yes, 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 yes. Hype, hype your colleagues, your classmates up. So you're going to get a headshot photo if you don't have it right now, but you want to begin your LinkedIn profile. My recommendation is to go on Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com. It is free for you and you are able to create like a logo. You can just do like design a little logo with your initials and then pop that on there as a holding. Um, until you get the photos, all right? If you wanna wait um, until you get the headshots, that's fine too, but please, please, please don't create a profile and then leave it empty. That is very, very important. Please do not create a profile and then leave it empty. Regarding your headline, your headline could be social work students aspiring to be a trauma counselor, okay? <clears throat> your headline could be finance major, aspiring or accounting major aspiring to be um, a CPA, right? Uh, so the the heading, the headline, you will you will work with career services for your entire LinkedIn profile, but just giving you some tips on what you can do. Your summary, so your summary is going to grow and develop as you grow and develop. So right now, a summary based off of what you're doing in college is more than enough. You're a college student at Aurora University. So freshman or sophomore at Aurora University looking to network with professionals in the um, human and animal services industry, right? Or in the um, nature and forestry industry or in the oncology industry. But letting the, letting the reader know that comes to your profile what you're interested in is absolutely helpful. So we want to have a summary um, on that page. Career services will support you in that. But again, you want to begin to build out your summary. You want to be able to get, build out your actual LinkedIn page as well. How many have done a volunteer experience? Drop a one in the chat if you've done volunteer. Drop a one in the chat. Yes, 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 yes. Drop a two in the chat if you've done an internship. Drop a two in the chat if you've done an internship. Yes, <clears throat> absolutely. One and two. Someone said one and two. Drop a three in the chat if you've done projects from your classes. Drop a three in the chat if you've done projects from your classes. Yes, here we go. Drop a four if you know another language besides English. Drop a four if you know another language besides English. Yes. Drop a five. If you are a part of or have been a part of clubs and organizations, drop a five, drop a five. Look at that. Hey, you all, all of that information is going to go on your LinkedIn page. Yes, absolutely. I said it. I said it. So if you've done one through five, if you have one through five, you're going to add it on your LinkedIn page because guess what? That's what's on your resume. If you hung out with career services, you have a resume. You're just going to transfer. You're going to copy and paste that information on your LinkedIn profile. Okay. That is so important. I have to ask you all, do you have skills? Do you have skills? Do you have Microsoft skills? Do you have social media skills? Do you have communication skills? I, I don't see any activity in the chat. Do you have Microsoft skills? Do you have social media skills? Yes. Do you have communication skills? Do you have research skills? Do, oh, okay. I think we're getting the picture. That is going to be on your LinkedIn as well. Photoshop, <gasps> Adobe Design, all of that is going to be on your. You know what? What was that? Was it SPSS? Is that it? That's. Do you all know how to use SPSS? Some of some of your psychology and social work. You've had to use that in class. You're going to add it in the skill, skill section. So are you all getting an idea of what you can add in the LinkedIn? Yes or no? 
Yes or no? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Are we getting an idea of what? Yes. Again, this is your professional portfolio. Okay. If you have artwork that you want to advertise in your summary, let's take a picture of it, a nice quality picture of it, and upload it there. Maybe you all have a website. Some of you all are artists, are photographers, and you have a website and you want to advertise your work. It can go on your LinkedIn profile as well. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are in the in the LinkedIn profile, you're going to add your education. Absolutely. You are absolutely going to add your education. You want to make sure you have the correct Aurora University, just in case there's another one um, in our world. Um, it's going to be Aurora University in Aurora, Illinois. Okay, you're going to add your major um, and you're going to add honors and awards. What have you been honored for? Um, what rewards have you received You know, while in, in college? You want to highlight there. I, I love this part about LinkedIn, not just that you get to advertise, you know, all of your successes that uh, you've been able to get through and move through, but you actually get to get recommendations. Okay. Who drop it in the chat? Who can you receive recommendations from? Drop it in the chat. Who can you individually, you professors? Yes. Who else? Professors, uh, uh, other examples, employers. Yep. Keep going. Old bosses, as long as you all still have a good relationship. Previous bosses, yep. Mentors, clinical instructors. I was looking for that. Sports coaches. Yes. Managers, coworkers, teachers, employers, internship supervisors. Yes. Maybe you volunteered and someone can write a letter uh, on your behalf regarding your volunteer and career services. If you connect with career services and you build a relationship with career services, they can then be a reference for you. And you can do that in written form, okay, where they write up a, a letter of recommendation and they send it off. And you can do it on LinkedIn as well, okay? So that is amazing. You want to grow your recommendations. You want to ask folks, first talk with career services on how to ask for um, uh, letters of recommendations, okay? First, talk with career services. And you wanna talk with career services about how to ask for recommendations, how to ask for informational interviews, how to, how to land an internship. You, you do want them to sit down with you and explore it because you're gonna give them more information and they're gonna ask you more questions so that you're more prepared. I wanna have Tori jump in, anything that was missed, no, I just want, I just, I, I just want to, I just want to emphasize yes. what Sherry is saying. Do you hear all the things she's saying that we can do in career services, right? We are not just here for resume and job search. We are here for all of it. So all the things that we are talking about today, some things that may seem like little things, right? Like how to write a, a email to a, a person that you might want to do an informational interview with, or how do you find you know, how do you write a summary on a LinkedIn or how, all the things that you may be like, I'm not going to waste their time coming into career services and asking that. That is not a waste of our time. That's what we're here for. And honestly, I love looking at resumes, but I love all these other questions too. Okay. So don't feel like you have to just come in to update your resume or to help finding a job or internship. Yes, we do all of that, but we do all the other little nuggets and pieces that are take you to those points are in between those points and after those points. So, and you have access to us forever. So those of you who are like, wow, I have never done a LinkedIn. This is stressful. I'm going to set up a time with Tori this, this semester, but I I'm graduating in May. And now I'm like really overwhelmed. What we can still help you after you graduate. Okay. And I've had students just send me their LinkedIn profile and say, Hey, how does it look? You know, does this look okay? Should I add this or whatever? And then I've had other students say, can we just sit down together and work on it together? Cause this is very overwhelming to me. And sure we can do that. So wherever you're at, whatever you need, we're here to help. So don't feel like there's, you have to be at a certain point to come into career services. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know anything. You can literally come in. I had a student the, the other day who just came in and was like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Like, can you <laughs> like, and, and that's okay. And then we start the conversation. Yeah. So, so whether it's a LinkedIn profile, a handshake we'll talk about in a minute, anything like that, take advantage of us. Again, it's not, it's not going to annoy us or bug us or be in a nuisance. That's what we're here for. So we want to help mm -hmm. you with all the questions you might have. We have been in your shoes. I have been in your shoes. I didn't go into career services. So I was about to graduate and because I had to for a class and it was because I thought I had to have it figured out. And I also didn't want to talk about my future because I didn't know what I was doing. And I figured I was going to have to like actually think about that. So I didn't mm -hmm. want to go in, but yep. I found that the people at career services were actually pretty friendly. Um, and so 
we I trust me, we're not gonna sit, we will ask you some hard questions maybe and challenge you, but we're not gonna be like, well, you you're too late. Nah, we're not gonna help you. Like we're never mm -hmm. gonna do that. We're gonna be there for you. So just wherever you're at, whether you're confused, whether you know exactly what you want to do and you just need help getting to the next step, we can help you. Yeah, that is so important. I really want to highlight that. I want to bold it. I want to underline it. I want to italicize it. And I want to drop some exclamation marks. If for those that do not know what they want to do, show up for yourself and be and say with a proud chest, I don't know what I want to do, but then add to it. I don't know what I want to do yet. I don't know what I want to do yet and begin the conversation of exploring. Because Tori is going to ask you, well, what do you enjoy? What are the things that you like? Well, I like, I like, I like soccer. Okay, great. Let's explore soccer. There are things that you can do within soccer, whether it's a national organization or I don't know much about soccer. So I'm going to stop there. But there are things that you can do, can do within soccer. It is an organization. It's an entity. There's so much you can do there. But it starts with you showing up to the office and just saying that very thing. I don't know what I want to do yet. And leave it up to Tori and her team to ask you lots of questions. And they're gonna do it in an incremental way. It's not gonna be overwhelming because first and foremost, you have to get the appropriate academics under your belt so that you continue can continue in a healthy way, exploring informational interviews, exploring job shadowing, exploring volunteering, exploring internships, okay? So I just wanted to highlight that. You do not have to know everything that you want to do right now, today. It will come to you as you begin to explore. So I hope you all heard that. I hope you heard it and I hope you hold it hold it with, within your heart, okay? That's so important. We are not, we are not discouraging you. We are always gonna encourage you, okay? So what did I say? I said LinkedIn, you can um, network, Okay, you can connect with folks. There's a, a an etiquette to it. That's why you want to go to career services. That's what I wanted to share. The reason why you want to go to career services for like how to email, how to um, send a message on LinkedIn, how to ask for things is because there's a certain etiquette. Okay, the etiquette that they provide you with is going to help the person receiving that information think about it and say yes. That's the goal, not to say no. Okay, um, so we want or be turned off. So we want to make sure you have the proper tools and resources to 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 have the etiquette behind you. Okay, with LinkedIn, you can also look for internships. But there's another place and job. There's enough jobs. There's another place. It is called Handshake. And so here we go. Handshake. Aurora University has Handshake, and I'm going to turn it over to Tori to talk about the benefits of using it and what it is. Yeah. So I'm going to steal some of Sherry's, you know, energy right now and say, if you have used and logged into your Handshake account in the last month, go ahead and drop a one in the chat. Woo, look at them, they yeah. jump right in. <laughs> so Handshake, what is it? It's a lot of things, right? You can look for jobs and internships. That's why it was created. It was created so you could do that. It's a job board. Ultimately, that's what it is. So employers post positions, internship, full-time, part-time, on-campus roles, and then you can apply directly through Handshake to those positions. The actual reason it was created was actually because there are some um, schools, and actually it was like a small school in Michigan that was finding they weren't getting a lot of the big employers to come to their campus. Why do big employers go to big campuses? Because they can get more people, right? Not because the quality of the people is better. Um, not that anybody's bad, but everybody's great quality, but they found the quality of candidates from smaller to mid-sized schools was actually better for them and worked well for a lot of their firms, but they don't get the same numbers. So this, these students at, at, this Michigan school created handshakes so that we have you all would have equal opportunity and access to these employers. So big employers like Google, um, Disney, um, a lot of these big employers, Aldi, that people want to work for are all on handshake. And I have made a point to make sure we're connected to them, make sure that you are connected to them. So handshake is a great way to find jobs and internships and even on campus part time jobs, that kind of stuff. Handshake also is a place where you can upload your resume. I will tell you, no one, unless you've come in and worked with me or Chris in our office, will probably have a resume approved the first time they upload it, okay? 
It's not because I don't like you. It's not because your resume is horrible. It's because I am, we are nitpicky. We want you to have the best resume so that you get jobs and, and internships. So you might be like, really, Tori, you rejected it just because you told me my bullets weren't lined up. <laughs> yep, mm-hmm, I yes. did. <laughs> um, because you're supposed to show attention to detail and that didn't show attention to detail. So I'm gonna fix it for you and then we're gonna get it going again. Most of you have awesome content. It's really, a lot of it's formatting stuff. And so don't be offended, don't be upset. Like, oh, and you don't necessarily have to come in um, to meet with us to, to edit it. We can do it via email, um, but just pay attention to our to our feedback because it's not because, it's because we love you actually. We want you to get the job and internship. So we're gonna give you as much feedback to make it pop as much as possible. The other thing that you can do on Handshake is um, actually follow employers. So if you're like, I'm really interested in Aldi, you can follow Aldi. It will notify you then anytime that they Aldi post a job or an internship. It will also give you reviews on what it's like to work for Aldi. People will give tips on interviewing and salary stuff. So if you've ever been on glassdoor.com, um, this, this um, site is kind of similar to that. But the nice thing about Handshake is it's focused on schools. So most of the people on there, it's all mostly entry-level positions, internships, because it's focused on universities and colleges in the area. Um, oh, Madison, thank you. I like to see that. So see, I helped her with her resume. And it was good. So we know what we're talking about here in career services, usually. Um, <laughs> and then the other thing that you can do is just obviously schedule appointments through Handshake. So I know some of you were asking, like, how do I make an appointment with you? Just go on Handshake. Um, you'll log in just like you do with your academic advisors. You probably have done it that way. You'll log in, you'll hit um, career center, you'll click on schedule an appointment, and then you will get an appointment with one of us. And so you can meet with myself. You can meet with Chris. Both of us are awesome. Terry's also taking appointments. So just look at your schedule, look what's available and schedule a time. Okay. And again, it can be about any of these things we're talking about today and any of the things we've talked about this week. So don't feel like you have to have it all figured out, or it's just about a resume. I do meet virtually online with students. We do Zoom appointments. So you can pick, when you pick your appointment time, you can decide if you want to meet in person, which I love because I love seeing you guys. Or if you want to meet virtually, a lot of you are online students or maybe at our GWC or Woodstock campuses. So if you're at another campus and you, or you can't get here or you just don't feel like driving in the snow, we can help you. I've had sometimes students have actually Zoomed me from the library because they didn't feel like walking over here. That's okay too, <laughs> though. I would, you know, walking is not bad for you, but that's okay too. If it's cold and rainy, you might not want to come over here. So whatever it is, um, we can Zoom, we can do phone. Um, and I said, like I said, we could also do email if that's easier for you. I know some of you work weird shifts. And so sometimes the email is the easiest and whatever you need, we can do it for you. Mm. So can I, is, oh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I was going to just say Handshake is a, is a tool in your toolbox, right? So LinkedIn is one tool. Handshake's another tool. You don't just use LinkedIn. You don't just use Handshake. You use them both. And then you can use other tools like Indeed, like, um, you know, internships.com if you're looking for an internship. NPO.net is great for nonprofits. There's um, Glassdoor.com has things. I know some people use Simply Hired. There's all these different sites that exist use them all. So yes, we love Handshake and we pay for Handshake as a university and we want you to use it, but that is not the end all be all. So don't feel like that you only can use Handshake and you can only find an internship or a job through Handshake. That is one tool in your toolbox. So, you know, yeah. I want to highlight those two things. One of them and remind me you all, I want to highlight the following of companies. I want to highlight that because you talked about um, Handshake being able to do that. But then I also want to talk about this toolbox. So can you all just safely, as long as you're sitting, sitting, as long as you're sitting down um, in a safe place, can you close your eyes and can you visualize a toolbox? Can you visualize a toolbox? And I want you to think of the biggest toolbox possible. All of these resources are in this toolbox and it is going to take you to stick your hand in that toolbox, reach out and say, you know what, today I'm going to use LinkedIn. OK, and before I use link, LinkedIn, I'm going to actually talk with career services just so that I get a better understanding of how to use it, how to be professional on it, because it is not like Facebook. It is not like Instagram. It is not like Twitter and TikTok. It is a professional platform for you to share your thought leadership. Thought leadership is uh, your own kind of 
way of thinking about whatever topic that's going on in your field or industry. It is a way to follow companies and network with folks. So I really want you to think about this. As Tori said, your toolbox, there are so many different things. There is never just one thing, okay? The, 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 the thing that really can help you all is engaging in those informational interviews and connecting and networking with folks. Do you all remember the saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know? It is what you know, but the part that you have to hold on to is, is, is it's who you know, who's in your network, because they are going to help you. They are going to help you skip a few steps to get to where you're going, or they're going to say, no, you need to take this step, this step, because it's going to help you go to the next level. Please <clears throat> utilize your network, start with career services, build your network. It is so important. OK, now I wanted to say about following companies. So on LinkedIn, you are able to follow companies. And I just want to show this example, just like you can on Handshake. So give me one second. You all can see our screen. I want you all to check out how you can follow companies. So someone drop in the chat a company that you want me to uh, check out. Just drop it in the chat. The first one that does it, I'll be able to search it. OK, DCFS. And I think I actually have to spell it out. So let, so let me spell it out, but I want to show you this. So Leticia, I typed in DCFS, okay? And you'll likely have to spell it out, but guess what happened? It showed me the people first. So Leticia is a child protection advanced specialist in Chicago. Let's see where Leticia went to school. Hmm? Let's, let's, let's. <gasps> she went to Dominican University. She got her master's in social work, yes. Dominican University is connected with folks at Aurora University. They hang out together, you all. So how cool is that? That you, an Aurora student, can connect with a Dominican student because they know each other. They, their programs hang out and talk to each other so that you can build your network. Someone, Julie, let's see. Let's see, because it says Aurora. <gasps> Wait a minute. If I scroll down, I might see Aurora University. She's an alum. She went to North Central. Even if Tori did not know her, Tori can reach out and say, Julie, we went to North Central College. Not at the same time, but we went to North Central College and I work at Aurora University. Let's talk, because I got some folks that will meet you. Tori does stuff like this. But do you see how you're able to just type in and look what comes up, okay? Now, here's some posts regarding DCFS, yes? now. If I were to type in Department of Children, what is it? Department of Children and, and Family Services, services yeah. it's going to come up. The company is going to come up. But guess who else came up? Other people within DCFS. So I'm going to click on DCFS. And guess what I can do? I can now follow the company. Boop. Now I'm following it. Now, if I want to get notifications from them it'll come up on my timeline but look how amazing is this and now i'm getting connections but i could see job postings okay i can also see you should be able to see what's going on if they're posting if they're posting on their account um, on their linkedin account you can see you can follow them but then it tells you to check out their website so you always want to go to your company's uh the company that you're interested in their website so i hope that was helpful and then what i love about linkedin is it says pages people also view so you want to be in the 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 absolutely you're welcome you want to be in this area okay so then now it says well check out these other organizations as well so now you've built built your um, awareness of the organizations that are are similar okay so I wanted to share that. I wanted to show you all that. Um, and I wanted to be mindful. Any questions that came in the chat that we could answer? If not, we are going to continue on. All right. So you're going to want to talk about yourself. You may not want to, but you're going to need to. All right. How many have done, drop a five in the chat. How many have done an elevator pitch? Drop a five in the chat. How many have done an elevator pitch? Wow. Look at that, Tori. I know, I'm so proud. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay, okay. How many, this is the first time hearing of an elevator pitch. Drop a two in the chat. First time hearing of an elevator pitch. Yes. Hello, friends. You're here for it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. All right. So an elevator pitch. 
is an opportunity for you in 30 seconds or less to tell someone. It could be someone that you want to conduct your informational interview with. It could be a company that um, they're at a career fair. Um, uh, Aurora University's career services, they offer career fairs so you can go to them. It could be someone that you're just wanting to network with. You want them to know about you. An elevator pitch is, the idea is you're in an elevator and you have about 30 seconds in between the next floor that you're going to. What are you going to say to that potential employer, potential inter internship supervisor, potential person that you want to um, volunteer with? What are you going to say? And so you want to think about it in this way. You want to talk about who you are. So my elevator pitch, I'm going to do it for Tori. My elevator pitch in um, in grad school for me was, was this. Hi, Tori. And so the setting, let's take the setting. The setting is going to be at um, a, a job fair at AU. So I'm walking in the hall. I hadn't planned on attending, but I see Tori and her badge says Family and Family Counseling Services of Aurora. And I'm, 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 I'm in a master's program. And so I want to, I want to, I want to reach out to them. So I'm going to walk up to Tori and I'm going to say, Tori, my name is Sherry S. W uh, Wick. I was Smith in college, but anyway, um, my name is Sherry S. Wick and I am a graduate student. I saw your name badge and I'm very familiar with Family Counseling Services of Aurora. I looked on your website and you all work with children all the way up to older adults. You all support people with domestic violence and I value supporting people on their healing journey. It is so important for me to make a difference because I believe all people have the right to heal. Please share with me um, a way to, to share my resume with you or may I have your business card so that I can reach out to you to learn more about how to intern with you. What do you all, what did you all hear? What did you all hear? Drop it in the chat. What words came out of my mouth? What stuck out to you? Drop it in the chat. My experience, what I value, what I value, what else? Passion. Yes, what is the way to share my resume? Contact information, asking for business card, making the connection up front that I shared my value, reaching out, background of the company. I'm so happy you said that. Yes, you all wanna make sure you research these companies. You can research companies on LinkedIn. You can look at career services when they post about career fairs. You can look up the company beforehand. Please, 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 it's important to look up the company beforehand so you know what they're about. It is so important. Um, for you to do that so that you give the employer a little bit of information of, hey, I've done my work. Yes, Clarissa, I said I wanted everyone to be able to heal. That is a value of mine. The elevator pitch feels scary at first, you all. It feels scary at first. But when you practice, guess, get, take a while, guess, who can support you in creating an a, a elevator pitch? Take a while, guess, drop the name in the chat. Or drop the office in the chat. Who will support you? Come on, you all. Thank you. Yes. Are you you all getting it? You, you getting it? That's right. So you definitely want to have an elevator pitch because you never know if you're going to meet someone in the elevator or when you're walking in class because employers come on campus. They're they're coming back on campus now, right? Walking around and mm -hmm. yep. Employers are on campus hanging out. And so you want to be able to practice ahead of time so you can get some of the big jitters out. You're gonna have, your nerves are gonna be elevated, um, but when you practice, so you can practice with career services, practice, practice with family, practice with friends, uh, practice with your classmates to help you. That's right, Alicia, put my name down. Put, I am here for it, okay? You can practice with all of us to be able to support you. But remember, you want to talk about your values, your passion. You want to add your major. But then you want to think about what's your call to action? What would you? What are you asking of them? Can you have their business card? Can you connect with them on LinkedIn? Can you conduct an informational interview? Are they offering any internship opportunities, any job shadowing opportunities, any volunteer opportunities? Or maybe even you're ready to... Uh, get that full-time job, okay? So the elevator pitch is 30 seconds. You're not telling all of your business. You just want them to know, hey, this is about me and here's my call to action, okay? All right, how we doing? Are we okay? Are you all getting some information? Drop a five in the chat if you're getting some information that you're gonna utilize. All right, 
Yes, 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 yes. Now, remember you all, the worksheets, we can send those to you. Do not worry, we'll get, we'll give it. We'll make sure we get that information to you all. For those that are able to use the worksheets, really take a deep dive in there, add your quotes, motivational quotes, um, add some books. I have, um, my one of my goals is to read um, one book a month, okay? And so the book that I'm all is on this month is actually You Owe You. And guess what? I'm on chapter six and this is what it says. It says, put yourself in miracle territory. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to read that part. But that is E.T., the hip hop preacher. He has a really powerful story. So think about how you are adding to your spirit. Those are deposits and withdrawals. Deposits and withdrawals. So let, let's talk about something so, so, so important. So I told you all my background is in career, but also mental health. Okay. And regarding mental health, our the our core belief that we hold, there are a lot of things that have contributed to it. Family, experiences, good ones, not so good ones. Okay. Society has contributed to our core beliefs. All right. Friends have contributed to our core beliefs. Movies have people's faith and background. There is so much that has been contributed to our core beliefs. But guess what? If we don't check our core beliefs, if they are negative core beliefs, or I call them with my clients lies that do not hold up in court, our thoughts become very hard, toxic, unhelpful, and unhealthy thoughts. And then our behaviors do so. Okay, so hear me out. You all hear me? Drop a one in the chat if you hear if you hear me. When it comes to career, you have to make sure that you check your core beliefs because someone who has unhealthy thoughts about themselves and their abilities, you can't show up in an interview talking about the things that you that you that you can do. That doesn't work. Your thoughts, if your thoughts are trained to be self-critical and always hurtful, that's how you're going to show up in your interview, you all. We don't want that. You don't want that. You're not paying this money to go to college, working a full job, full time job, taking care of your family to then show up at a full at a full time internship or a job and say, well, you know, I'm not really good at much. I, I you know, I, I mean, I'm getting straight A's, but absolutely not. Check your core beliefs and let's rewire them. Let's find the truth. You know who you are. You know the power you hold inside. And if you don't know, it's okay to learn. It's okay to begin self-reflection, but we wanna make sure your thoughts, your core beliefs align so that your behavior align. Meaning so that you can walk into an interview still nervous, that is real. You're going to be nervous, that adrenaline. But when you walk into the interview, you won't be thinking poorly about yourself. You'll just be thinking, I'm nervous, but that's okay. It's a part of the journey. And I'm gonna make sure I communicate who I am so this employer knows that I am the person for this internship or I am the person for this job. Okay. Tori, you were leaning in. Yep. You can always read my body language here, Wick. <laughs> um, how many of you, and I don't know, I, have a, I guess we'll say, put, put a three in the chat. How many of you have went, wanted to apply to an internship or job and have told yourself, I'm not qualified enough for this? Ooh. <gasps> Be honest. We're all family in here. Somebody put exclamation marks. Be yeah. honest. I can tell you, I have done the same thing. I have not applied to a job because I yep. didn't think I was qualified enough for it. Yep. And you know what that does? That guarantees you don't get the job or internship, right? Yep. That's all it does. That's so all that, it does. that core belief that you're not good enough leads to those thoughts of, I, I'm not qualified enough for this, which leads to the behavior of you just not applying, right? Yeah. But guess what? If you tell yourself, I am good enough, I rock. Now you don't want to be arrogant and be like, I'm amazing and everyone should hire me. But you want to go in there and say, I have these things to offer because you all do. Think about when she was asking you about all the things to put on your LinkedIn profile, your yes. student orgs, right? Your jobs, your internships, your portfolio, like all those things. That's the stuff that makes you you and makes you unique. And mm -hmm. so those are the things that are make you qualified. So if you look at a job description or an internship description and you meet 60 to 70% of the qualifications apply. 
Now, obviously, if they're requiring a doctorate and you don't have a doctorate, don't apply to that. It's a waste of everybody's time. But if they say master's preferred, but bachelor's required, and you have just got your bachelor's and you don't have that master's, don't tell yourself, well, I can't apply to this because it says master's preferred. Yes, they might take a person with a master's over you, but they also might say, hey, this person has all these qualifications and I can train them. And you know what? Maybe we'll help pay for their master's. Oh, even better. So think about that. Okay. Don't, don't discount yourself before you even put yourself in the running. I, one of the things my mentor told me when I first started the job search is you have a 0% chance of getting the job. If you don't apply, say it again, say it again, say it or a hundred percent, a hundred percent chance of getting the job, not getting the job. If you don't apply, right. hundred percent chance that you will not get selected. But if you apply, you at least have a chance. My first job out of grad school it was an assistant director position, right? That's just a step below where I'm at now, right? So I was like, yeah, I'm not, that's not an entry level job. I'm not going to apply to that. But then I read through the job description. I was like, I could do most of these things and it just requires a master's. I just got my master's. I don't want to apply. Well, guess what? Got the job. And guess what? Assistant director for that role at University of Illinois was entry level. <laughs> so there were a lot of assistant directors. There was no like below that. So, but I didn't know that. And had I decided eh, I'm not qualified, I would never have gotten that job. And that job gave me a strong foundation in my, my career here. So just think about that. The worst that can happen is you don't get the job. Cool. You're already there anyway. The best that could happen is you at least get an interview. And then you will bring all this energy and all these skills and experiences and bring that to the interview. And guess what? You're going to land that job or internship because you have us in your corner. Yes. So, so yes. just put yourself out there. Like I said, the worst that can happen is that you won't get the job. And again. You're already there anyway if you don't apply. And Madeline, you if you have an internship under your belt, if you have volunteer experience under your belt, you qualify for to apply for that yep. job. Yes. Employers say at least one year of experience. Please know that internships, volunteering, job shadowing, all of that is going to help the employer know that you have a wealth of knowledge just outside of academics. So please do not limit yourself. You want to know, I want you to know, we want you to know that your internship, your volunteering, your job shadowing, all of that is experience. I hope you hear us. I hope you stayed on um, to hear that. That is a part of that one year experience. A lot of times employers, yes, they ask for the one to two, one to three years. They are looking at your resume and they're gonna see that you have an internship, volunteer, uh, job shadowing, all those things, okay? Yes, absolutely. and. You're probably working a part-time or full-time job. All of that applies and going to school, okay? All right, these are some affirmations. I know we're at time. Beware of your deposits and withdrawals. That's why we have quotes in there. That's why we have book recommendations. Affirm yourself often, often. I was doing that before I hung out with you all. Every time I affirm myself, every time. I get nervous too. Statements that you could say, I give myself permission to make mistakes. I, I am committed to learn, to grow, to make mistakes, or I'm committed to just be. I'm committed to gather information. I am the candidate candidate for this job internship, job or internship, and I have what I need to be successful. You do internally and you have um, <laughs> internally and you have career services, your academic advisors, mentors in your corner to support you. Please connect with us, follow us, ask us questions. We're here. Here's a couple of other slides for you. You could scan um, their motivational YouTube videos to, I, again, I have to have that as well. The mental health field is challenging. And so I really have to stay in a lighter, lighter energy, lighter mood um, and, 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 and deposit some of that motivation within me. I do it every day, actually. I do some affirmations every day. So scan the, the QR codes, hold on to them. Schedule your appointments with Career Services, please do not forget. Thank you all so much.